Hi, Julie from Pure Grain TV, and we're going to talk today with Sam Dunn, co-founder of Banger Films. My name is Sam Dunn, headbanger, rocker, and anthropologist. I'm going to take you into the world of heavy metal. Join Iron Maiden on Flight 666, the award-winning film of the most adventurous rock tour ever. Okay, Julie from Pure Grain TV, and we're talking today with Sam Dunn, co-founder of Banger Films. How are you? I'm very good. good. Thank you. Uh, so we're here to talk about the completion of Metal Evolution, the lost episode. Um, extreme Metal. I understand that you have some exciting news about this recently. Uh, you've actually got a little bit of funding for this. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, so I mean, just to give you a bit of the backstory, Metal Evolution was an 11 part series on the history of heavy metal and it was based on our heavy metal family tree, which we created back when we did Metal Headbangers Journey. And it sort of breaks metal down into 26 different subgenres. And uh, people loved the family tree, so we decided to do a series based on that. And uh, we did the series. It was a big success. It was even number one on VH1 Classic in the US and, uh, and on much more here in Canada. And it's airing uh, around the world right now in different countries. Um, but uh, fans felt that an, an episode on extreme metal was missing. Especially all of you who told us that extreme metal was missing from the series. Missing, and we kind of agreed. And in fact, it was part of our initial pitch, but uh, it was considered just a little too out on the edge for the, the network. So we've launched an Indiegogo campaign, and so far we've raised roughly $15,000 um, to basically research, write, film, edit um, this this episode. So it's it's new for us. We're kind of appealing to metal fans to help us fund this project because normally we get financing from broadcasters or right. from distributors to do what we do. So in the absence of that, we're kind of trying to do a grassroots thing where everyone does it together. So VH1 funded the first 11. And so basically what you're saying is this was too extreme for them to fund it? Like if it's too extreme, where are you going to air this? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, you know, VH1 Classic have been hugely supportive of us. You know, they, they, they broadcast three of our documentaries and the Metal Evolution series. And really there's not a lot of networks in the US that would even do that. So we're, we're thankful to them because without them, we wouldn't have the series out there in the first place. But their sweet spot is kind of like Kiss, Ted Nugent, Aerosmith, Alice Cooper, Mainstream Metallica, heavy. and so they were willing to do a thrash metal episode because they know that they have an audience for that. But I think when you get into talking bands like Death, Morbid Angel, Carcass, Entombed, Demo Borgir, and all these bands, uh, they kind of go cross-eyed uh, and they don't really see them as 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 having a market for right. that. So where is it going to show? Um, at minimum, it's going to be like an online digital release. Um, there is the possibility that it might get picked up by networks down the road. Um, and there is also the possibility of a DVD um, where we could just do the Extreme Metal episode and then pile a bunch of special features on, on there that we didn't get to do with the main series. So right now there's a bunch of possibilities. So is this this episode then for Extreme Metal, is this going to be, okay, you did 11, 11 episodes, they're all basically an hour each, touching on every aspect of heavy metal. So is this going to be an extra hour, or is this also going to be like a subgenre thing where, I mean, there's so much metal out there. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you stop? Like, mm -hmm. like, is this the final episode, or are you going to have to keep doing this for, for 20 years in, uh, for future metal? Yeah, it's true. I mean, heavy metal to us is like a good bowl of peanuts sometimes. We just can't <laughs> stop eating. Uh, eating them because we're, we're, we're big fans. But um, when it comes to the Extreme Metal episode, um, we're, we're going to approach it similar to what we did with the other episodes. They were broken down into five acts or five sections and they roughly run around 45 minutes. Um, but I guess because there, it isn't a conventional broadcast, there is a possibility it could be formatted slightly differently. We could do it a bit longer than the other episodes. But at the same time, I mean, we're, we're very interested in telling stories that are interesting and keep people in their seats. So I don't want to get too overindulgent and just right. pile a bunch of stuff in there just for the sake of piling it in there, but rather we want to create an interesting story about extreme metal. What is it? Where did it come from? How did it evolve? Why is it extreme? Why is it so underground? Okay. Um, what are the 
what are the key locations, the cities and the countries that produce the bands that are an important part of the story. So we're going to approach it very similar to the other episodes. So what inspired you to do the first 11 parts in the first place? Where did your inspiration come from? Well, you know, when we, when we initially created the family tree back when we did Headbanger's Journey, we created it because we knew in that film we weren't going to have the time to cover all of metal's history. I mean, Headbanger's Journey was more about the culture of metal, the controversy of metal. You being really, an anthropologist, I'm sure that yeah, was quite it, intriguing. It was more of a study of why does it polarize people? What is it about this music that either people love it or they hate it? It's very unique in that sense. So we created the family tree just to kind of, you know, give a nod to the fact that there is a, there's a big history here that we're just not gonna have the time to do. So fast forward a few years, uh, you know, um, Scott thought, you know, well, why don't we do this as a series? Because, you know, the heavy metal family tree has always been hugely popular. Like we always, we get hundreds and hundreds of emails from people. Can I get one for my bedroom wall? Right, right. <laughs> so I can throw darts at the bands I hate and I don't know, put circles around the bands that I like. But um, so that's really how it came together. We just, we began to realize, okay, maybe there's a TV series here that there's, there's a big story about the history of metal that we hadn't really touched on before. So that's that's how it came mm. to be. Mm. Yeah, metal fans are very true to their to their music. We went to Heavy T.O. Couple, mm. Well, I guess a couple months ago now. Yeah. And I have to say, we were talking so much about, these fans stood for 10 hours a day in muck up to their knees. And you don't see that at different types of genres, really. They're really diehard fans, they're really true. So for your funding, are you looking for Basically, you're, are you looking for funding from anybody? Anybody who supports heavy metal? Are you looking for corporations? Are you looking for, can somebody donate $20 towards this? Mm -hmm. is, is that how this works? It's, it is a grassroots campaign. I mean, we're looking for anyone who either is a fan of extreme metal or who liked Metal Evolution and wants to see more. I mean, I think what, we, what we've heard from people is that, um, you know, I wasn't a flat fan of glam metal before I saw Metal Evolution, but I'm not really a fan still, but I like the episode because now I understand it better. And so I guess that's really what we hope to achieve with Extreme Metal is because it is so underground and I think pretty foreign and obscure to people. But myself, I have always gravitated towards the heavier end of the spectrum. So there's a lot right. of bands in this episode that I'm excited about. And I think for a lot of younger fans, Extreme Metal is heavy metal because it's, it's really pushing metal to the edge and pushing it forward. So it seems crazy we wouldn't have an episode that is about this genre that's kind of out there on the edge, um, yeah. um, seeing how far it can go. Um, but yeah, anybody can contribute. Um, you can contribute from $5 to $50,000 right. if you want. So everything from like a digital download copy of the show uh, right up through We've got everything from VIP uh, packages to Vakken Open Air next year to you can actually come and spend a day with us on the set when oh, we're with great. some of your favorite bands. You can have a question that you want asked of every single band we interview and then we'll put it all together for you on a DVD and send it to you so you can have all your favorite bands answering this question that you've come up with. So. Yeah, so it really, it, 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 there's a big range. That's great, that, that sounds mm -hmm. awesome. So speaking of all these bands, you've been around the world, you've met many, many, many rock and roll heroes. Is there any one hero or any one rock star, if you want, for lack of a better word, that um, you maybe found yourself a little bit starstruck with or in just interesting meeting or a little bit, you know, I know I yeah. do this for a living and sometimes I'm like, okay, this is neat, you know? Yeah. So is there anybody that ever like kind of stood out that you went, oh, this is interesting? Well, I mean, you know, there's a scene in Headbanger's Journey when I meet Bruce Dickinson on the stage of the Hammersmith uh, in London and, you know, Iron Maiden's my all-time favorite band and, you know, um, I was a bass player as a kid and Steve Harris was my hero and so when I got to meet him, um, that was incredible and I, I, was, I was pretty nervous and, you know, and, and, and pretty awestruck. Um, but, you know, since then I've had the opportunity to meet hundreds and hundreds of, right. of musicians and, uh, you know, I, I would like to mention for Metal Evolution, I was really blown away by Arthur Brown, who's a British uh, rock uh, singer from the 60s, who we included in the Shock Rock episode, 
who I didn't really know much about before we did the series, but um, he really was doing crazy over the top theatrics on stage long before Alice Cooper came along. Right. Or Kiss uh, came along. He had this helmet that he lit on fire and had these crazy masks <laughs> and was dancing around and you know he sang a song called Fire and so it was really um, he was pretty ahead of, of his time right. and and it's nice that he's super articulate and super friendly so I really I really enjoyed meeting Arthur. Right. Is there another band you would like to dive into deeper like let's just say this project gets finished and everything you've yeah. done Rush, Beyond the Light Stage, you've done uh, Iron Maiden, Flight 66, Flight 666 you will edit sixes. that, right? Oh. Sometimes four sixes by accident. Flight yeah. 666. Um, is there another band you might want to dive into a little bit more? Well, we're doing a documentary on Alice Cooper uh, right now, and uh, it's turning into a, a really interesting story. Uh, we're following his life from the beginning to his big comeback in the mid 80s. And um, I've learned a lot about him because I wasn't really a, a big fan of Alice growing up. Um, but uh, I, I didn't realize the extent to which he was doing things that was pretty revolutionary. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking earlier about how they were fans of the Beatles in high school, but they were big fans of Salvador Dali. And so they kind of had this vision that they would combine those two together and see what happens. And uh, obviously they went on to big success, but there's been also some real dark moments in Alice's life um, that he's never really talked about before. Mm -hmm. So we're excited uh, about that. ACDC is the other big one that, you know, they're one of the biggest bands on the planet still and mm -hmm. still no one has ever done their, their story. That's um, right, nobody so, has ever really. Yeah. So, you know, if you're listening guys, you know, banger. We, we'd, like to, we'd like to work with you. <laughs> Is there anywhere where people can donate money to Banger yeah. Films? Yeah. Give us that information. Sure, yeah, well, um, our URL for the Extreme Metal campaign is uh, indiegogo.com slash extreme metal. And so you can go to that site. Uh, we put a little 90 second video together explaining what the campaign is and why we're doing it. Um, it describes um, what we're going to do with the Extreme Metal episode. And then it also breaks down all of the different contribution levels. What you will get for a $5 contribution what you will get for a $666 uh, contribution, which was a mandatory That's number, uh, and, in, 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 and beyond there and, and in between. So that's, that's the, the place to go, indiegogo.com slash extreme metal. Please help us finally complete the metal evolution story. Julie from Pure Grain TV, thanks. I have faith that there's, there's some smart kids out there that are putting something together that us old farts <laughs> aren't going to understand. <laughs> <laughs>